there, happy Thursday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so we are going to, well, hopefully, I don't see why not, uh, finish our little jellyfish today. So this is for the ABC Stitch Along. We are going in alphabetical order. So uh, we're doing two a month. Uh, this is our second for the month. Uh, we've already done the inchworm. And I'd like to finish the jellyfish and then get the inchworm and the jellyfish prepped for quilting. And tomorrow I would like to get all of my sewing machine stuff out and do some free motion quilting on those two. And then we are also going to start hand quilting the giraffe. So that is the plan for the week, rest of the week, you guys. All right, let's get stitching. Okay, so happy to have you guys here again. I'm gonna shimmy sham everyone in here. Okay, so here's where we left off. We got our sweet little jellyfish going on here. Uh, so all we have to do yet is his little mouth and uh, the J's. And uh, those I think we'll do satin stitch, like how we've done a lot of the other ones. Uh, maybe we'll do that satin stitch where we like try and go around a curve again. I think that'd be kind of fun. Uh, the other thing is I would like to try and use um, primarily today just uh, floss from the floof <laughs> right here. So this is just all the extra floss. Uh, you know, all the good stuff is rolled up on, on bobbins here. But whenever we get one done and it's long enough, I've just been kind of throwing it in the floof here. And I think we just stitch with whatever we got here and we can even do like multicolors for the J. I actually think it'd look, I think it would fit with this design because we do have all the different colors in the oral arms. That's, that's the anatomy of the jellyfish there, his oral arms. <laughs> uh, I just find that funny. Learning all the anatomies. So, all right, let's start off with the mouth. And I did want to do, hey, Kelly. Uh, I did want to do, I think, the red for the mouth, and there was a little bit hanging out here. Oh, this is going to be a great amount. I might even, a shorter amount might be good, too. I think I see a little bit of red hiding here. So this is like a massive mess. Uh, oh, yeah, here. Oh, even a smaller piece. Perfect. Uh, so I, I think I can do this in like three stitches. We're going to be good to go here. So I'm just going to try and line up these three threads. For the satin stitch, we will do two strands because then I can do that railroad technique. Uh, we'll go over that for sure. Um, but for everything else, I've been doing three strands just so it's a little thicker line. Uh, we're going to do that trick again too where I can uh, just leave. I'm going to go from the front and I'm going to leave just enough out, just enough floss out that I can finish the stitch plus uh, weave in the end. Uh, then we won't have any like big jumps. So that might be a little confusing, but it'll make total sense in a moment here. So I'm uh, starting the mouth, but I'm going to leave a little bit of floss here. So like two and a half inches or so. Enough that I can finish that first stitch plus weave in my ends. I don't tie knots at the beginning. Uh, you can, but I just like a no knot back. I don't like when I accidentally catch stuff on knots, so I, I like weaving in my ends. And now it's a habit, so now I'm just doing it. So let's do the two little back stitches that I'll need for the rest of the mouth. I think this orange or this red is gonna be really pretty. All right, so that's the two stitches of the mouth, and then we have this like crazy laser mouth thing happening. Uh, that we'll come back to and do that last stitch and weave in the ends. So here I'm gonna just weave in what little stitches I can here. I think this this floss is officially spent. I don't think I'm gonna keep the tiny little fuzzle that, that's left over. Although I could probably get another tiny little mouth like this with with it. Eh, probably not. Yeah, that's that's the garbage fuzzle. Let's trim. I'll even throw it in my little garbage right away. All right, and then I'm gonna come back to that little bit that we left on the front and I'm gonna thread that. 
Let's see uh, if I can thread this easily. I'm, I didn't trim the ends, so it might be a little bit difficult. Oh, got it, perfect. All right, and then I'm gonna get that last little stitch. That was actually our first stitch that I kind of skipped. And there we go, his little mouthy is done. And I'm just gonna weave in the end here. So this is the same thing that we did for the eyes yesterday. That's why, you know, there's no big jumps of color, of floss. It's just all kind of contained in the eyes there. All right, one more time. I always weave in three times, even in these little spots. In these little spots, if I don't feel like it's secure, I'll go one more time, but I think we're good. Trim that little bit, throw it in my little garbage, and a little uh, jellyfish is done. Ugh, I love all those little French knots. Uh, if you didn't check out our French knots uh, videos uh, from yesterday and the day before, uh, go check it out like two days ago over on YouTube because we went over the three things that you might be doing wrong um, when you uh, are doing a French knot. So if you're having any trouble with a French knot, um, then it could be one of those things. And actually, we may even have time tonight if anyone wants to go over that again. Uh, we can once we're all done here. So, all right, all we have left is our little J's. Um, and let me find a pencil. I think my pencil ran off. So we're gonna use, we'll use our, our fine line marker unless my pencil just shows up in two seconds here. Nope, <laughs> they're always running off. Um, so all I wanted to do with just like a marking tool is just kind of draw some parallel lines on this just so it's easier for me to uh, do my satin stitch. So a satin stitch is basically filling in the space with stitches and you're going from one side to the other side um, over and over again. And uh, it's helpful to keep your stitches parallel uh, when you draw a few lines and like guidelines. And I'm gonna actually curve, I think, my satin stitch around the edge here. I think that'd be kind of fun. So um, we didn't do that every time though. It's kind of fun to just go straight across too, but I think I don't know, should we go straight across or should we kind of curve around the edges? Um, I'm not quite sure. I haven't curved around the edges for a while. I think I kind of want to do that. So let's let's just draw in, I'm gonna just draw some lines that are parallel to um, how I want to stitch. So these are gonna be the directions of my lines. I'm gonna do like short little lines. I'm leaving about a quarter inch in between. And then I wanna kinda of curve around this edge. So this is kinda of like the peak. So I'm just gonna draw a straight line there. And then let's just kinda of maybe divide that up. So I think right there, ooh, that's gonna be quite the curve. Um, we'll give it a go though. And one there. So this is a water soluble marker. So I could, I could um, just dab some water on it and it would go away. But I'm gonna be covering all these stitches up so I'm not all the lines up so I'm not really all that really worried. Okay, I think that looks decent. So those are the lines that I'm gonna follow to do my satin stitch. And it's gonna be a, a bit tricky. It's kind of veering a little bit away from a nice clean satin stitch by doing this little arc here. Um, I could go straight across, like all of these could be just horizontal lines, but it's kind of fun to go, to bend around. So we'll, we'll maybe do that. And uh, so I wanna do the same thing here. Let's just draw. Kind of like the angle switching. There we go. And then now I'm gonna just draw some parallel lines up here. And yeah, I think that's good. And you know, let's just do one more, one more here. Just as a reminder um, of what direction I'm, I'm going in. Okay, so next up. So usually I would stitch in each of these lines first and then come back and fill the rest of it in. Thanks cosmic. Um, but I think in this case, I'm just going to start stitching and I'm going to aim for that line. And the reason for that is because I think I'm going to use some multicolored uh, shenanigans here. So uh, I am trying to just use up what's in the floof versus um, the floss cloud, <laughs> as it were, uh, versus getting new floss. So I want to just like pull random uh, strands of two. So like here's, here's a yellow. Oh gosh, this is a really long strand. So this is yellow and it's only two strands, which means I probably used it for a satin stitch earlier. Uh, so I think, I think we'll do that. 
Gosh, should I blend the colors? We could blend the colors. Ooh, that would, would be maybe fun. Let's find another one that's two strands. Oh, this guy looks like he started three strands and then is two. Okay, this blue is two strands. I'm gonna just pull out all the ones that are two strands. Oh, these are all really long. So like if I did this, I'd probably almost finish the J and I want it more, I guess, variegated. So here's, oh gosh, that's, well, that might be good for a mouth later. I'll save it. That's about as long as our, our, um, our uh, mouth was here. Okay, I gotta set all those aside there. just searching like for these ones with just like two in. Oh, here's that one that was started as three. And actually, maybe we just pull some out. Oh, here we go, that's a two. All right, good, so this one's a little bit shorter. We'll start there. But what we could do is actually combine some threads. Like we could just start with this one because I think this will get used up pretty quick, but we could, we could actually combine like Let's just pull that apart. Let's just do a yellow. We're experimenting now. We could do a yellow strand with another color strand. That would be kind of cool. So what about this orange that's already got like this weird thing coming out of it? Let's just pull this strand the rest of the way out. If I can manage. Oh, this is just going to be a massive knot here. Oh, he's not happy. Yeah, that's not pulling out. I'm just going to trim it and we'll grab a piece from there. But so this is kind of what I'm saying. What if we start with this orange and then what if we combine a yellow and an orange strand together? Then it's almost like variegated floss. That'd be kind of cool. So this will be our second strand is like a combo of colors. Oh, that's almost, that's close to the same length too. I'm just gonna trim it so it is. And then we can move on from there. We'll see what comes up next, but I think that's a good, that'll get us uh, started here. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Grabbing some floss. All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna start off with a little away knot. So this is very similar to me having left that stitch. Uh, but I'm just kind of reserving it for later without it flopping around. Um, and I'm going to do that by using an away knot method. So I'm going to start by just tying a knot. Ooh, it's a kind of a poor knot, but it'll work. And I'm, I'm going to stay on the inside edge, like the, the like tight edge versus the spread out edge. And I'm going to start at the top. So I'm going to actually uh, put my needle in a couple inches away from the front to the back. And we will come up just on the outside of all my lines, um, just so I'm actually covering up the line. And what we're doing here is we're just, again, reserving that floss for later. So I'll weave in that later. Okay, so let's, let's do our first stitch, cutting across. Ugh, I already like this color. So I'm just gonna try and stay parallel to the lines that came before and these are just my guide. So while I'm like looking at this to be parallel, I'm also looking at this one to be parallel. And uh, you know, so I'm just gonna do a few stitches and if it feels like I'm veering away from being vertical or from being um, parallel, then I'll, then I'll fix it. And actually I forgot, I'm not doing the railroad method here. So uh, the railroad method is when you have two strands like this, if you put your needle in between the two strands, like so, and then put your needle in and pull it all the way through, then those two strands should lay right next to each other, um, like side by side, instead of be all twisted up. So that'll just give you a, a prettier, shinier satin stitch. I didn't do that for the first couple, so those might be a little bit more twisted. I think they actually look fine. But so I'm gonna just as, I'm gonna try and make this a habit. I'm gonna try and do that railroad method. So I'm just putting the needle in this, in between the two threads. And then going down. There we go. I think I'm actually gonna go vertical. I did this the other day. I, I just feel like vertical's a bit easier for me for satin stitch. 
especially when I'm doing this railroad thing, I can just see, I can just see across a little bit better. Actually, no, maybe I don't know. Horizontal or vertical, I don't know. Let's just try both. All right, so I'm already feel like I'm running low on this color, which is great because I wanted to switch up colors a bunch. So I think these shorter little threads are gonna work out for us. Yay, I haven't done something like this before, just like all pile of random threads. I think this is this is fun, I like it. Ooh, so those, those stitches could have gone a little further, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm trying to start on um, just on the opposite edge or just on just on the outside edge of these lines and then going over to just the outside edge um, so I can cover up the lines but I kind of missed it on those couple but I'm not gonna worry All right here's our first line hello everyone thanks for popping in again directly across my nails are coming off officially now. Uh, <laughs> I had a nail break this evening, so uh, I'm going to try and make it through tomorrow, but Saturday's the day. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to try and blend the colors a little bit. Uh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> or I thought like I could do like the, the, the really light pink or maybe like this kind of peachy pink and then like that bubblegum pink for like an, not a perfect ombre, but like a sprinkling on, on the tip, maybe? I don't know. I'm talking as if I know how to do any of that stuff. <laughs> so I, I, I want to watch a video or something, but we're going to give it a go. Because I've officially gone through all the four colors that I have of that original like dip powder order um, that I got. So now I can start... I wanted to see what all the colors were on their own first, and then now I can start playing around, I think, a little in simple ways. Oh, this is actually taking us quite far. Okay, so now that one veered a little bit, I feel like. Um, this way, it, it got a little less parallel. So I can either take it out and redo it, or I can just go a little bit closer at the bottom and then a little further away from it. So I'm just kind of doing a correction now. There, now that's straight again. So you can still sort of see that it veered up, but I think once we have all the other stitches in there and it's all squished together, I don't think you're gonna notice. That's like such a tiny detail and we don't need to worry about all, all those, I don't think. Even though I'm doing this detail of doing the railroad thing, but you know get those details in a habit and then all of a sudden it'll all be pretty and nice, I suppose. Okay, I definitely like the idea of combining those next strands. So maybe after we run out of those, um, then we could do like a, maybe another, another solid color and then maybe the small J, we can do like a mix of colors again. I think that'd be fun. Ooh, we're getting a little twisty here. So I'm gonna just let this, oh no, I guess not that twisty. Not enough for it to dangle, but twisty enough that it's hard to get my needle in the middle of there. All right, that's our second guide point. Soon we're going to have to start all the turning. But I think that's going to be nice with... Uh, it's going to be nice with that mixed color, because if we make like a weird mistake, it's just going to all, hopefully, theoretically, blend together nicely. So I hope everyone's having a lovely Thursday. It felt like freaking Friday all day today. So I don't know about you guys. I have uh, I'll push through one more full day, but then <laughs> then it's like then Saturday I it's I'm gonna spend some time in the garden. I'm gonna cook some food, do my nails. Saturday's gonna be the chill day. Watch a movie while I do my nails. <laughs> that just sounds sounds nice. Uh, Alisa, it is uh, 8.30. Well, right now it's 8.50 p.m. Central Time. 
So I'm in the in the Midwest. I'm in Minnesota. But yeah, so I, I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and I'm here for typically an hour. Every once in a while, I pop in, in uh, on Saturdays, and then, then I'm here for like a couple hours. But I don't do that all the time. But I do Monday, Monday and Friday. Oh, you're from Wisconsin? Nice! That's where my family's from. We just were in Wisconsin a, a weekend or so ago. All right, I'm out of thread. Let's weave in this end, and then we get to try that mixed thread. I'm, I'm excited for that. And I'll also uh, weave in that away knot that we started with to get that done with. Now that I have stitches here to weave into. Ooh, that pushed up a little. Okay. All right. We're in like the mid, mid Wisconsin area, so like uh, by. Um, Lake Winnebago and stuff, just um, an hour or so from Milwaukee-ish. What part are what part are you in? It's always so beautiful there. It's beautiful here in Minnesota too. It's similar, I suppose. But we have family in the in the north, um, in that like Minaqua area, I suppose. Um, and that's a totally different landscape. <laughs> oh, and Black River Falls, nice. Northern Minnesota and Wisconsin are like totally different than Southern Minnesota and Wisconsin as far as like types of trees and um, that sort of thing. It's kind of kind of interesting, I think. All right. Got that guy woven in. So now here's the part I'm excited about. Let's do the mixed, mixed color. So this is uh, an orange, oops, fuzzle out of here. It's an orange and a yellow, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Oh, you're going to Minaqua this weekend for a convention. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, uh, John's family is kind of sort of in that vicinity up there. Watch out for ticks. I just, I just, that's the thing that I freak out about. I don't like freak out about, but like, I feel like it's always on the mind a little bit up north is looking out for, for ticks. <laughs> oh man. Maybe that's like a childhood fear that, that carried on. That could be, I feel like we learned about ticks and were scared about ticks when we were little. Oh, it definitely is so beautiful there. I don't know about the weather. Typically, they get similar weather um, in a couple days later than we get here. And it's been, like, so beautiful here in, um, like, the Minneapolis area in Minnesota. It's just been the most gorgeous 70s. So I'm guessing they're probably going to get – they're probably pretty similar up there right now. All right, I got to go vertical again. All right, so this is kind of funny. So I have these two different color threads that I'm splitting. I wonder if I should care what one's on the top or bottom. I don't think so. We're just gonna split it however it comes. I think this is gonna definitely veer from a satin stitch look a little bit too. I mean, we'll still be filling in the space, but this color is gonna be like kind of breaking up the like clean look of all one color, but I think that's kind of fun. We're playing around. This is the project to do it in. Ooh, a perfect pairing was a nice Netflix movie. Ooh, good to know, because I'm going to need, I'm going to need, I'm going to need them, because like I said uh, earlier with, um, or the other day, it's been taking me hours to do these stupid nails, so, uh, and, you know, I'm trying to get faster, and uh, I don't know, maybe it'll go a little faster this time, but I swear, I watched all of Hamilton um, and the Spring Awakening documentary. Uh, it was a musical night um, when I did my nails last, or a couple weeks, three weeks ago, so they've lasted three weeks, and that's a long thing to sit through. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Kelly, it's 90 plus in Alabama. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, little Brittany says, I went to the Mall of America once, so that is, that is right near me. And I don't think I've been there in years and years and years. All right, this is looking really kind of cute. It's even hard to, like, at a first glance, I don't think you can even really tell. Like, because if you blended, if your eyes kind of blend these two colors together, it kind of makes this first color, which is kind of interesting. So, all right, I'm going around this curve now, which would be kind of interesting. Um to see how well I can do it. So I'm kind of just treating it like my stitches that are on the inside. Like, okay, so like around, in between like these two points is the same number of stitches that should go in between these points theoretically. So I'm just gonna try and keep them really close to each other on the inner curve and just kind of spread them out a little bit on the outer curve and I'm hoping that there's enough stitches that they kind of squish each other together. If not I can add some like little stitches to kind of fill in the space on the outer edge but I'm hoping I don't really have to do that. I kind of feel like I already have a space I need to fill here but maybe I can just kind of scooch things. I think I think by having a lots of stitches though like I said I think it's gonna kind of push push everything together. We'll see. See how it goes. Oh, I don't know if I railroaded that last one. Oh, Lisa said, I want to buy an embroidery set at my local shop, but it's oh freaking expensive at the local shop. Yeah, I mean, comparatively, embroidery to other crafts can be much cheaper. Really all you need is a needle and some floss. Uh, oh, and some fabric, I suppose. But you can stitch onto a jacket or shirt that you already have or a tea towel or any fabric that you already have. It's definitely easier with a hoop, I think, especially if you're just starting. All right, let's see. See, I'm kind of wondering, I think I'm going to go back up here. I am going to add an extra little stitch. So I'm just going to come from the outside and just try and fill in this gap a little bit. I'm not going to worry about railroading it. So I'm not going all the way to the other side. I'm just kind of going halfway. So you can kind of tell when you do that, but actually now that I'm looking at it, it just is, it's blending in a little bit, I think. Oh, darling, Mandy Bear says embroidery is so much cheaper than needlepoint. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, Ultimately, like any craft where you can make it as cheap or as expensive as you want, but in general, there's a really low, low um, cost to entry, I think, for embroidery compared to like quilting or something like that. Actually, I mean, with quilting, you can just have some thread and sew some fabric together too. So, I mean... Um, but if you want all the tools to make it a whole lot easier, then, then yeah, like quilting's like way more expensive. But yeah, needlepoint, I think a needlepoint can get expensive too with the pre-printed fabrics and, and all that. The cheapest way, if there's a design that you like, um, is to see if there's like a digital pattern for it, I'm thinking get the pattern and then just trace it to some fabric that you have, grab a needle and whatever floss you have. I mean, floss is pretty inexpensive. Um, but yeah, I hear ya. But yeah, even at it's most expensive, I'm just kind of thinking about it compared to compared to like quilting. I think even at its most expensive, I don't think you'd even get close to being as expensive <laughs> as like what quilting uh, theoretically can get to, like getting like sewing machines and all that sort of thing. All right, I, don't, I think this is looking super cute going around the edge here. We're getting a little bit of that kind of mixed color and uh, around that curve, it's kind of fun. Oh, Elisa, I, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's not that expensive, but if you're from Malaysia, it's kind of expensive. Uh, I see, okay. Yeah, I mean, in that case, like, if you have any sort of sewing needle, um, 
in any sort of thread, I mean, technically, you know, that's all you need. But yeah, it is fun to have a kit with all the fun stuff in it, for sure. All right, I've reached this little guide post line. Feeling good. Uh, I'm going to need a new color soon. I don't think this is going to take me uh, the entire way. We'll get, we'll get close. But then I'll need like a teeny bit more. And I don't know if we should make it like similar colors or have it like be way out there. Because like we have that blue, which would be fun, like just the little tip of it blue and then like some of this blue. Uh, but I don't know, maybe maybe we keep with these kind of orangey red bits. So maybe I find like a red that we can maybe combine with, you know, a yellow or something. That's maybe a way to still like have fun with it, but not be like so out there with it. I don't know. But I think it, this is kind of fun. I could see doing this again where I take, uh, where I take, um, two different threads, two different colors like this and, and put them together again. That's kind of, it's kind of fun. I mean, maybe it's looking a little bit messy as a, as a satin stitch, but in general, it's just, just kind of fun. With lots of different colors. So I think the one last color will kind of like finish it off. So I think these J's, let's see. Oh gosh, it's already 9.02. So, well, if we don't get, I mean, all this sand stitch always takes forever, but uh, if we don't get all the way tonight to where we are assembling these pieces, like putting the backing fabric and the, the um, oops, sorry, uh, the back fabric and the batting, if we don't get that all done tonight, that is so fast. We can easily do that tomorrow right before we, we quilt. So I'm not... I'm not too worried about that. We will still be quilting tomorrow for sure. So I'm going to get the sewing machine out. Uh, I'll have my darning foot or my free motion quilting foot on the machine. And I'll have my little practice board out so we can test out, uh, like with a dry erase marker, test out some designs first before before I get started, just because I, I, I need that little confidence boost, I suppose, just to know like where I'm going next a little bit. I always feel like I get stuck, uh, stuck in the, like a location or like a, like a, I'm always afraid I'm going to like get myself trapped in a hole, in a loop or something uh, with free motion quilting, which is just kind of silly, but I don't know. I feel that way. So I, I like doing that little bit of practice. Oh, Alisa, that's a great idea. Just tracing the pattern on the phone with a pen. That's that's perfect. I, I like using a, um, I just like using a mechanical pencil. It's light enough, but it's, it's um, and it'll kind of like smear away after a little and it's, it makes a nice crisp line and everything still. Uh-oh, last, last uh, thread. I always kind of lose my threads when it gets this short, but I, I think I have a few more stitches that can, I can get out of here. Few more stitches in there, not too many though. Actually, maybe this will be my last stitch and then I want to do like a little fill stitch a few back. All right, so this is gonna be my last stitch with this combo thread, um, except for that little fill. I think I want to go like right here and just add a little bit more, like just going like the three quarters of the way through again, just kind of tuck it underneath the other stitches. There we go. Like so. Um, all right, so I'm gonna weave in that end, and then let's just pick, let's pick our next colors for this, and maybe it'll be um, if I have some left, it'll be the next colors for the small J as well. Oop. Ah. Dropping stuff. There we are. Sleep. Okay. Let's choose some next colors here. So that's that's really subtle, but it's kind of fun. So again, what we did is we started with that um, tiger lily color, like this orange. So this is a solid color to here. And then we kind of blended two colors together, uh, which is just kind of fun. 
yeah, I think that's fun. And now we have a little bit left there. So let's just see, let's just kind of, I'm picking from the cloud here again. Um, I do like the idea of maybe a little bit of the red. Okay, so here's just a teeny bit. If we did one, here, how about this? So I, I have, uh, this is like a small piece of red, but there's three strands. So why don't I take one strand out and we'll save that um, for a moment here. So let's take this strand and kind of finish up finish up the J. So it's just um, the two strands of red. So it'll be a solid red at the end. And then we'll keep going with the solid red until I run out over here. I might, I might already be run out by then. Um, but then we can do that, that third strand that I had of red and combine that with another color. I'm probably making this way more difficult than I need to, but it's fun. I'm having a fun idea or fun, uh, fun time. Oh, Catherine says, I like the idea of bubbles and waves. Ooh, a wave. I didn't think about adding that to the bubbles. So yeah, we talked about for the jellyfish doing, um, for the quilting, like, well, in my head, it's um, someone, like, it, bubbles were mentioned, but I was thinking about it sort of like where you just do, like, a bunch of continuous circles, and it's, oh, pebbles, like, pebbles is the, I think, name of the style of quilting, but, like, if we could do, like, pe pebbles with, like, a few little waves in there, ooh, that would be super duper cool, that would be, like, a fun, I'm, I'm like, trying to, <laughs> I'm thinking with my fingers, I'm thinking, like, how would I do that, <laughs> so that's the sort of thing that we would practice a little bit on like the dry erase board a little bit um, before actually stitching it tomorrow. But I like that idea. I like that idea of the combo. Because then I don't have to do the whole thing with the, the pebbles, which can get tedious, but I suppose I need practice with it too. But yeah, I like the, I love the idea of like combining that. All right, let's get the rest of these little red stitches in. It's going to be kind of cute. Oh yeah, you can definitely use sewing thread for embroidery. In fact, uh, like, <laughs> I have my floss thickness guide again. Uh, down here, like if you guys were wondering what like these other numbers are, um, this right here is is a 12 weight sewing thread. So that's actually what I'm crocheting. <laughs> that's what I'm crocheting the doily out of. Uh, Use that doily that I'm working on. That's that's with 12 weight sewing thread, which is kind of crazy. It's super duper tiny. Um, oh, I just stole all my uh, puzzles. Okay, so that's this is one strand of 12 weight sewing thread, and this is actually two strands together. So uh, you can get some nice effects with just you know basically plain sewing thread. I mean, this is kind of thick sewing thread, the size 12, um, but it's doable. Uh, you could even use smaller sewing thread and just do a bunch of bunch of them together. That would 100% work. That would be actually really kind of cool looking. We should do that sometime. We should stitch um, with like a really thin sewing thread or embroider with a really small sewing thread sometime, but combine a bunch. I think that might be make some really interesting, interestingly textured stitches. So like if we did like six strands or something of really small th sewing thread. Ooh, each stitch would look so pretty, I think. <laughs> I may have to try that. I like that idea. I've definitely never done that before um, with thin st sewing thread. I had sewing um, thread. I have done it with that 12 weight, oh, like a, f a whole embroidery with it, or several embroideries with just the 12 weight. Oh man, I lost my needle again. Uh, but not with like a bunch of really thin stuff like grouped together. Ooh, this is gonna be kind of fuzzy. I may have to trim this. Nope, got it. <laughs> Gotta do an evil laugh when you've foiled the ends. I beat, beat the ends. They didn't beat me. I'm threading that needle. This is cute. I do like, look how cute this is. Oh my gosh. I love this little tiny bit of color here. Ugh. All right. So I'm going to weave in this end and I have a bunch of this red left. So I think I might just start up with this dot. Even if I can't fill the whole thing. Cause I think I'm going to have to make another away knot. So I'll probably only get a few stitches, but that'd be kind of cool. So I'd have a few stitches of red and then I'd have like some sort of combo of red and something else, maybe pink. That'd be cool together. Um, 
and then we'll just kind of con con continue that combo till I run out, and then we'll choose we'll choose another color, maybe a solid color again. But ugh, this is looking cool. All right, I really like what that that's like with all the different colors. Ooh, I want to experiment with that more. Like on a bigger design, just doing a bunch of this be a good way to just use up spare floss, like have some fun design that you just keep changing colors on. I like it. Oh, <laughs> uh, Lisa says it looks like an orange flavored candy cane. It totally does. It's kind of fun though. Like I think it fits with this design a little bit because there is just like a lot of color kind of all mashed together uh, with the French knot. So I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. All right. I'm going to tie a tiny, a little away knot. A not here. This is going to use up a ton of thread, but whatever. Versus like doing a jump. So I'm going to go here. And let's just do... I'm going to just try and start in the middle of these two points because I want to have enough thread. Oh, now I'm going a different direction too. I'll, I'll probably go... Um, I'll go left to right again when we do the, the small part, but now I got myself stuck doing going right to left with this this top of this the dot. But that's fine. I think that looks good there. I don't think I need an extra little line at the top. I think we're good. Gosh, maybe I will be able to actually finish <laughs> this whole dot. Eh, I don't know. Maybe not. Who's going to win? This is a thread chicken situation here. Hey, Patty. Thanks for popping in. So again, we'll be quilting this tomorrow. Um, I'm going to go for like another uh, 20 minutes or so here tonight. Uh, but then, or, you know, until we get done. Well, no. Well, it'll be, uh, if I get done early before 9.30, then I'll go ahead and we'll assemble this with the back and uh, pin it all together. Um, but if not, we'll do that tomorrow and we'll definitely quilt, quilt tomorrow. So I'm basically making a bunch of mini quilts. We're doing the quilt as you go process to make a large quilt. That's the entire alphabet. But the quilt as you go process, you're actually sewing a bunch of little, little um, quilts together almost. So I'll show you guys that once I'm done with this dot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna win thread chicken here. So I didn't switch colors in the middle like I thought I was going to, uh, but because I had enough, I think I'm gonna go up here though. I'm gonna add like one more stitch up here. Oh well, that was dumb. Oh well, we're doing it anyway. I have, like no thread to weave in, um, so there. But that that looks a little cuter, I think. So I I have like a very very tiny piece of thread here, and I want to weave it in um, three times still. So okay, the first time I can get through. Um, I might be able to get the second time, but the third time I think I'm gonna have to go uh, eye of the needle first. So if you have, if you um. If your thread's too short and you can't you can't go back and forth like what I'm doing. Uh, you can go, so here's where I think it's too short. So I'm gonna go with the eye of the needle first and that'll give you some more some more leeway there. There, cool, that did the job. Boop. Everything needs sound effects. Trim this, boop. Okay, so let's weave in that end. Again, this is way shorter than I'd like, but we're going to get it. Oh God, I think I can do, oh, we got, we got it one way. So short. Yeah, I think we're just going to go in one more time. I usually like to do three, but we're just going to deal with it. This will all be sewn into a quilt, so I'm not too worried about this being pulled out. Actually not worried at all about that. So I think two two passes will do. Ooh, let's get that a little closer. Okay. 
So there's a little red dot. Um, so now I, I'm out of floss, so I do want to take um, the, here's that last piece of red. I kind of want to pair that with, um, oh, I said pink tonight. That would be kind of cute. This is, this is too short. Let's see. Oh, here's some pink. So I do have some pink hiding in here. Ooh, long piece of pink. Actually, here's another, like, kind of even a single piece of pink already. Ooh, and it's almost the size of this red. Oh, that's what we're going with. So, all right, let's pair these together. And we'll do, like, a little, another uh, combo situation. All right, I'm just going to cut them so they're equal. And we will... Start up that letter J. So now in this in this case, I am going to just weave into the backs of these stitches and then just do a little jump. I guess I don't care if there's like a tiny little jump like that. I don't think I don't think anyone's going to really notice that on the back. If you shine it up to the light like this, you might be able to see that I have a stitch behind there. You know, like, you know, like this, you can see the stitch behind. But if it's just this tiny little area, I think who cares? All right, I want to go from the inside out though so let's weave in my stitches here Ooh, this red and pink is gonna be so cute so oh thanks for the share of the video and thanks for all um your follows you guys i am trying to get up to that thirty thousand follower mark <laughs> over on on tiktok so i definitely appreciate Appreciate you guys chipping in with your follows. That's nice. All right, let's uh, cross to this other side here. Oh, I feel like we got just oodles of floss compared to what we had. So, all right, let's split this, that railroad thing. I think I'm going to just have to keep this upright. It's feeling weird doing it vertical like that. Ugh, pink and red together. So cute. Yeah, I do like these all mixed. So we should, when I run out of this color, we should do some other like weird contrasty color, like what we did there, or, or like pop of color. I guess it's not super contrasty, but like just pop of color. Like we have this kind of dark pink. That could be kind of fun. Even like this purple or something would be kind of neat. Calling it out a, a bit. Trying to scooch along here, though. All these sand stitches always take some time. So we have about 12 minutes or so here yet. I think we'll get a decent length, decent way on this. I'm hoping to get it done still but ugh, look at all this it's just like pop so cute with all this red here i think your eye will catch it a little bit which i think is fun like as, as you're zooming like looking at the whole quilt that's what i'm gonna really like about this quilt when it's done is that there's gonna be just like little moments all over it because we are doing kind of like all these little experiments uh with each one so I'm excited to see uh, what it's going to be like done. So we're going to be auctioning off the quilt, and then the money from that is going to be going to the Minneapolis Crisis Nursery. Um, that won't be till probably late spring next year, though, <laughs> by the time we, we get the whole quilt done and all of these stitched. Well, kind of like how it's like a thick line and then like a thin line of pink. It's kind of working out kind of neat. Feel like you're you're like abstract painting to some extent because you're just kind of letting the stitches go where they may and uh, you know which is kind of scary in embroidery because you know theoretically like your brain wants everything every stitch to be perfect everything in its place so like having these different colors that we're satin stitching together and just letting them be what it's gonna be is kind of I don't know feels like an abstract like you know I, I, I don't do abstract painting, but in my head, <laughs> there's a lot of like letting 
the color and the medium do what it's going to do to some extent. I feel like maybe that's not true, but in my head, that's abstract painting as an element of that. And I'm feeling like we're doing that here too. Oh man, I'm not even sure we're going to get this silly little J done tonight. Well, if that's, if that's the case, we'll, we'll still be quilting tomorrow. I'm not worried about that. We will set everything else up for quilting and quickly finish up this J and get on with it. If I don't finish tonight yet. I think it looks so cool though. I, like this, uh, it, this is making me want to like come up with a whole project that we can do this with just like combining colors and, or, you know, sometimes we use a solid color. Sometimes we mix the colors. Like, I don't know what kind of project would one do like this, I suppose. Maybe like one of those where the like image or text or something is silhouetted and then it's got a bunch of like bursts of stuff happening around it, kind of making like a negative space silhouette. I could see that being fun with with this technique of just like two threads of different colors. And piles of satin stitch. Don't know, but I like it. All right, I think I think this will be my last stitch with these. Yeah, I might be able to sneak one more in here. Yeah, let's try one more, then I'm right on that guideline, and then, ugh, yeah, that's it. Then I'll switch, we'll have to pick another color. But I do kind of like the idea of, like, a purple or something. Or even if we brought back the orange now, that could be kind of cool. <laughs> it looks like the letter I. We could do the a little bit of orange, maybe. I don't know. Let's weave in the end and see what we got. I'm still trying to just use what's in my little messy bundle of floss, which... We've had no problem having enough floss from there lately. All right. So, like, maybe this is, um, you know, I have this solid, I have these um, bits of orange that we had earlier. Um, ooh, there's kind of quite a bit. So this could actually finish it off. So we could do orange, which is kind of fun. I think that'll sort of blend but sort of a contrast at the same time why do you separate the threads with the needle oh uh flower power it's called railroading and it's so i mean it looks a little bit funny when i mix the colors together but it's you know like here uh it's so that instead of the two strands i'm stitching with two strands so instead of the two strands being all twisted up potentially when i make a stitch if i put the needle in the middle of them like like that then um Theoretically, then the two strands lay really nicely next to each other. And if each strand, like each single strand lays perfectly next to each other in a satin stitch, that's when you're going to get your like shiniest, prettiest um, satin stitch. So by using two strands instead of one and doing that little split method, um, that railroading, uh, that that um, can make it appear as if it's just like one strand next to each other. I, I haven't done it much and I'm trying to just kind of make it more of a habit. It's kind of fun. I like it. Um, with that last, with the, when we did it with the, um, the last one, the letter I, I feel like that made everything like a lot smoother and stuff. All right, I'm still kind of deciding on this orange, but I think I might just go with it. I'm just going with it. It's here. It's the right length. It's two strands already. Let's just go for it. And we used it down here too, so it's gonna feel like in the right realm. We could do the whole, <laughs> Anne, you're right. <laughs> Anne says we could do the whole koala embroidery like this. Maybe we should do like some version of that. We could put like a little little sweaters on them or something. So our next, H-I-J-K, yeah. So our, the koala will be our next embroidery uh for for this and we won't be doing that till the first week in july so it's the first week and the second week basically of of the month that we do do two letters so week one is letter number one and 
week two is letter number two. So the koala is first. And then the lion. Ooh, the lion. We talked about we talked about doing turkey work stitch for the lion. We could just use up like all the rest of the floss that we have doing that, and he could have like a super duper multicolored um, mane. Ooh, kind of like that idea. But I like the idea of maybe incorporating it into the um, koalas too. So the koala pattern has those. It has that little like I don't know bamboo or whatever that it's on. The leaves we could for sure do like kind of a multicolor thing. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm splitting like I'm just I have two strands and I'm putting the needle right between them and see you can already see like it's oops sorry I'm blocking it. Uh, but it there it's basically making those it's almost forcing those stitches to be side by side. So like as I pull through like this they're still kind of staying side by side and. Yeah, so now, oh, see, like, these three stitches look really nice. So it's it's almost instead of doing, I did three stitches of two, but instead of um, looking like a twist three, like, twisted up little bits, it looks like six single strands next to each other. So if you can get that going, then, you know, when it hits the light, everything is just super perfect shiny and everything. It was a little weird doing it with, um, you know, maybe not necessary when, when I stirred up the colors like that, when I had two different colors, but when you're just using to the same color and you can get those strands laying right next to each other. It's just a subtle way to just make your satin stitch a little shinier and a little nicer. And the reason it's shiny, like it, it has that, well, satiny feel. And the reason that it looks more satiny with single strands next to each other is because the light hits it all the same. So if every strand is perfectly laying flat and the light hits it, it's going to hit each of those strands in the exact same way versus if there's a twist in it, uh, the light's going to hit that part differently. Um, and, and you'll get like just that subtle impression of, of that. And I mean, you know, that's so subtle in what we're doing here that like really doesn't matter. But, um, you know, it's just those itty bitty things that I think the subconscious kind of picks up on. And so I'm just trying to get in the habit of doing it more than anything else. It's a little weird extra step that, I don't know, a little annoying, but I do like the look at it, of it. Like, I mean, you know, now I'm curving, going around a curve, so I'm kind of, it's not as good anymore. But like, I mean, these first, this first little quarter inch block, though, looks awesome um, by doing it that way. Better than if I would have just um, stuck my needle in, then, you know, I could have twisted the, the stitches and I mean it already doesn't look as good like when I'm going on this curve I'm losing a little bit of that like perfectness next to each other that's why I'm like you know maybe we we didn't have to do it the curved way I could have just done like the whole thing horizontal and that would have been really pretty too but we haven't done this curve around um in a while on one of these so and I actually think it's pretty cute with all these different colors so ultimately I, I like how it turned out okay at this point I'm going to finish this. This would annoy me to leave like this much left. So we're going to go a few minutes over again. Oh, and I haven't announced this yet again, but we are, um, we're doing our live special again. So if you order $20 or more in the shop, I will throw in a free mystery gift if you order um, during the live or just a hair after. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> But I, I appreciate you guys um, the past few days that I've been doing that. We could do the, oh yeah, I, I read that already, sorry. Um, all right, I am excited for doing the koala. So next week, I mean, we're still going to do quilting on this tomorrow. I keep forgetting today's not Friday. So we, we do have one more day, and that's going to be the, um, we're going to be quilting this. But then after that, next week, we'll be stitching the embroidery of the month. Uh, which again is our little lilac pattern, our cute little dudes here. Um, so that is, oh, uh, thanks for the roses. I appreciate it. But yeah, so this will be uh, next week. I keep wanting to say tomorrow, but <laughs> it's not next week tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, so we'll be stitching him up. I'm really excited to do all of those 
lazy daisy stitches for for the lilacs Ugh, all the little lilac buds and it's also a stem stitch for the leaves and the stem uh, we haven't done one of those in a while so that's gonna be kind of fun it's grown on me that was for me the stem stitch was like my scariest stitch when i was learning and then i realized why in particular it was scary and we'll go over that for sure um why it was so daunting for me at, at the beginning until i figured it out and then i'm like oh yeah that's why so oh it's friday there in australia that's true you, you guys are in the future there trying to split these is a little annoying but all right I think we got like maybe four more stitches in here and then we're good I might actually go and fill in a few of these stitches around the edge there but oh it's looking so fun I just it's like this weird ombre thing happening I am just loving that look okay my brain's gonna be going now like different ways to to do this look so yeah maybe we will have to try something on the koala that does this I don't know if I want to do the whole koala like that because it'll take way more than a week. Like if we fill, I mean, we should do that for one though. We should, one of these designs, we should kind of like satin stitch the whole thing in, like fill the whole thing in, not necessarily satin stitch, but like thread paint. That's, that's kind of what, what I'm looking for. Um, like a, like completely filled in. That'd be kind of fun. This actually would have been a good one to do it with uh, just because there's such a little solid area. So it'd be easier to, thread paint a smaller area I guess that's what I'm getting at than a giant one all right I'm putting one more stitch in here and then I'm calling oh wait I'm gonna fill in a little bit because I'm not calling it done I'm gonna f like go around that curve again there's just a, a space or two that's annoying me so like right here I think we'll fill that little spot so and then I think right here too looks like it needs one more stitch let's just kind of fit it in there there I think that looks pretty decent I think that's actually looking really cute I love it all just melded together can you tell I'm excited I unlocked a new idea <laughs> Uh, new to me uh, potential like for something some other project that's my get most excited we did something it turned out fun and I want to do more of that something all right so uh, so I think we'll leave it there for tonight I am just so loving this little kind of I don't know I don't know how you'd even call this kind of ombre but not quite kind of just like abstract uh, colors in there. I think it just kind of pops, like your eye just kind of goes there too. It's kind of fun. Um, so uh, yeah, so I think tomorrow we will, I'll take this out of the hoop and we'll just do our assembly of, of this one. And then we have the, the letter I yet. And what we're going for is I need to, we have the, the giraffe to do yet too, but we need to assemble it like how we did the giraffe. So I have the back fabric, we have our batting, and then the front so we'll need to pin it all together so uh, that will be the plan tomorrow first thing for the J and the I and uh, then we'll be sewing it so what that means is like we're going to be uh, quilting all the pieces together so you know we got our little little cute designs here and uh, like I said earlier we're basically making a pile of mini quilts and then we'll be sewing those mini quilts together with like a little sashing in between and uh, we'll get like a sense of um, the cute quilting and everything. So it's the, the quilt as you go process is the, is the term. Uh, and uh, I'm kind of want to like later this month, I, we have a few free weeks this month and uh, it would be fun to start actually assembling these, I think, uh, as assembling our like finished our finished like mini quilts. I think that'd be fun to like learn that part of the process. Uh, and then you can, we'll basically have a finished quilt by the time we're done with the embroidery, which is pretty cool. So, all right, you guys. So thanks again for joining me uh, this Thursday and staying, staying here, here late with me here. Uh, I'll be here again tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And yeah, we'll, 
we'll pin these together and get quilting. I'm really excited for that again. We'll get the machine out. That's always fun. And uh, oh, it's always a little tense. Like I always feel like stressed out doing the, uh, the machine embroidery or the machine uh, quilting. Uh, but I don't know. It'll pass. I'm, I'm just trying to get more comfortable with that machine quilting. And this is a great project with all these quilt as you go pieces to play around. Uh, so I'm loving the ideas that you guys got for that too. And we'll draw, we'll sketch them out tomorrow and get our quilting on. So awesome. Have a lovely rest of your evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.